All right. You ready? I'm I'm ready. <laughs> Are you sure? Yeah. You don't seem you don't seem ready. You seem a little giddy. I'm excited. I've got uh stories ready. Okay. Um I put in prep. I didn't listen to my last episode, but neither uh, did I, honestly. <laughs> so. But uh I have stories I don't think I would have told you. Well, that's great. Um, you're here fresh off the release of your new special and album. Yes. Just tell people right now. I, I've heard so many good things about it. And <laughs> thank and you from people, me. <laughs> from you. Yeah, most they've all been from you. you. Never have to you never have to wonder what your how your career is doing because you always yeah. tell people. Oh, I respect yeah. Respect that. Um you, you ever hear did you ever see when Don Rickles roast was roasting i think that uh martin scorsese they were at they were honoring him but he yeah. goes and robert de niro one of the greatest actors of our time just ask him he'll tell you just <laughs> oh what a great joke what a perfectly tight seamless joke yeah just speaking of tight seamless jokes your special was <laughs> filled with tight jokes seamless uh seamless. No fat, flawless. That's right. Where? What is the special called? I've I've heard there was so many different names people are calling it that I know. <laughs> I <haven't... laughs> what is it called? Yeah, contrary to popular belief, the special is not called hot garbage. Okay. Uh, okay. Let me. I have these notes are not going to make sense now. <laughs> so much to fix. Oh man, I didn't see that coming, and that was really fun anyways uh it's called before he was super yes um <laughs> it's on youtube uh go on uh, steven rogers comedy on youtube steven rogers comedy on instagram all that good stuff you'll be able to find and steven rogers comedy.com yeah all those places that's great i yeah. i um you know people will ask like what can we do to support and i always tell them you know what you could do is you could turn my special on or you could put it on Pandora or whatever mm. and turn the volume all the way down <laughs> and throw your phone across the room <laughs> and don't come back for hours. Just like yeah. if you have some cleaning to do, just yeah. let it run yeah. on loop. Um, Truly, if you're going to leave home for work and you leave your computer behind, just put on repeat and right and go i mean your Let plants will grow weird but uh yeah, they're all gonna have crippling anxiety but <laughs> yeah they're all gonna they'll be afraid of water but uh oh, but man. yeah if you have pets at home i think i i have found that my comedy works best for pets that are left home alone mm -hmm. and their owners want them to feel like someone's there without actually having to pay anyone to be there i think so, that's a great move yeah, so that's where I usually play well, really well. Um, speaking of pets, my dog is trying to get into a little he's he's getting into a crate that's about half his size right now. So if you hear anything that sounds like light construction, that's just him. <laughs> um, but I've uh, got I've got we, both cats running around. So right. I, I, yeah, you know, I, I don't like shows that these overproduced shows the that are they're as people people call them professional i find them to be i find there to be like a a human element that's lacking and you sure. and this is clearly a show that is run by a human that is flawed you know and yeah i mean and the guest why i mean at a professional show where are you going to see uh a drawing of a half naked woman that shouldn't be in in frame well obviously <laughs> Uh, we'll have to cut that out, but <laughs> I no, that is, that was nice of you to, uh, put up a picture of, uh, <laughs> a, a, that's actually me. Uh, yeah. I don't know. <laughs> right. Yeah. For the audio listeners go onto YouTube and go to about the four or five minute mark and see the, the very filthy, dirty art that Steve hangs on his wall. What he, what he thinks is appropriate to get on. Do you do corporate gigs with that in the background? <laughs> well, here's the the problem: is my girlfriend, very funny comedian, past guest of yours, Caitlin Palufo, mm -hmm. uh, is a art uh, 
connoisseur or right. whatever. And uh, there is very, there's no wall that is safe in my apartment to do a Zoom call anymore. Uh, this is actually the cleanest piece of art on our. <laughs> As someone that's been to your apartment, I can attest to that. I, yeah. I often go, is that what I think? You go, yeah, that's what it yeah, is. Yeah, yeah. There's one is. guy that looks like he's holding a boom mic. It's huh? <laughs> right. He's that is a big production. Anyway. <laughs> uh, well, well, here you are fresh off of this exciting thing that's happened to you. And the special is doing well. And I'm assuming the album is doing well. Um, and it's great to see. And I always find, you know, when you're riding high, it's the best time to sort of go back and look at things that have happened in your life that are that are not fun. And right. um, and, you know, actually, the first thing I want to ask you is because I f I felt like we we really connected uh, and I connected with a lot of comics. More noise, Elmer, more noise. <laughs> uh, um, <laughs> I felt like when I recorded my stuff and I know I talked to you about this with you. I was horribly depressed when it was done. What did you, did you feel like that? And if you didn't, what did you do to sort of stave off those feelings? I, I can't imagine I didn't go through that, but it, it doesn't stand out as much uh, to me. And uh, I, I wanted to get some more distractions behind me. Uh, <laughs> um, the, uh, the depression after uh, the late night was more pronounced. I might have been used. Maybe I was expecting it. Um, I did go on vacation because of you. Uh, and I've given you credit uh, about this before. You recorded yours and you, you were like, hey, get ready for this. And I did remember it from Colbert, but I didn't think about, yeah, this is going to be possibly worse because <laughs> it's an hour's worth of stuff that you've worked so hard on. Uh, so immediately we went to um, Costa Rica, Caitlin and I, and that helped quite a bit. I think if also, I think because it was out of the U S I think any U S vacation, I would have been like uh, the album, blah, blah, blah. But uh, going in like a totally different environment, truly helped and that all the credit goes to you and, and caitlin i did none of the work on either <laughs> yeah i feel like it's a thing of where you as comics i feel like we rarely rarely celebrate any sort of success any sort of win we go from one thing to the next yeah you know we we don't we don't give ourselves and it's hard because we're, we we feel like any sort of stopping of momentum is is backwards but that's not true you know, hundred percent. You know, we. I think we can all ex attest that, like, it is good to sit for a second and, and be happy about something because, yeah, every you know these things are fleeting. But yeah, I, I just, I, if I ever do another one, I will finish, and then the next day I'm getting on a plane and yeah. I'm, I'm getting away because, it's, it's, and you know this, it's a feeling of like you've put so much time and effort, and you know, uh, um. Our our mutual uh, friend Jen would say that like the 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 comfort of the anxiety of preparing for it mm -hmm. is is more comfortable for us than the release of not having it. You know what I mean? Yes. Because yes. we we are used to feeling anxious about this thing and, and stressed, and that that when that feeling is gone, we don't know what to do. You know? Yes, I uh, I hundred percent agree. I want to say this because i'm a fan of yours you will make another one you said if uh well i have started looking into um disney's hiring process sure and sure i went to disney in february and i <laughs> thought to myself i this is sort of the speed that i think i could operate right that. have you worked on your point my oh i haven't the, the like, Disney point yeah i need a disney point but there's so much drama going on down there right now <laughs> that I I just it doesn't seem like the right time to apply. Yeah, I I it does. It's really stressed there. Actually, the last time I was there, the Disney point was the finger. So yeah, <laughs> yeah, I was like, it's up. Where where am I? Where am I and going? it's hard for them to give the middle finger because they have four fingers. Right, right. When most of the characters have paws, it's hard to know which one is the middle. <laughs> you know. You know? <laughs> But uh, uh but goofy was like you know what i mean yeah <laughs> yeah um but I was like, uh, 
why does Goofy talk with a smoker's cough? I don't I don't know. I don't know why he's doing that. I I don't get it. But you all right, so so you you oh, you, man. you know, you you were able to manage the that feeling of of sadness after um only because the anxiety of being in a place I've never been right uh, out of the country uh, was enough anxiety that I never, I didn't have time to worry about. Was that album good? Uh, also, you know, yeah, I think, uh, working on the thing is always our favorite part. And unfortunately, this is a good thing. We're used to instant reactions in our business. Is this joke funny? Well, I'm going to find out three times tonight at running around or, you know, late show. This did better. It's like you, you get instant data, but when you make something uh, like an album, you're one, not there for any reactions. Uh, social media is your only uh, feedback other than word of mouth and the social media feedback is great, but then you're on social media, you know, you're, you're constantly checking your, you know, it's not as rewarding as when you're making the thing it is re rewarding, but the feelings are different. Yeah, absolutely. And, and you made a great point that when you're in the moment of recording, perfect. I think we have some, I think we have some, uh, metal ball bearings we can roll out soon. <laughs> um, but uh, when you're in the process of making it, you really aren't looking for the perfect reaction. You're looking mm. just to get the words right. You know what I mean? Yeah, <laughs> yeah. You're looking just to get the word. And then, because, I mean, it is the truth. It all has to be sweetened. You know, like, yeah. like you don't, I'm not saying you're adding laugh tracks, but like, just in production, we have to raise everything. I have to be raised. You, you know, the, your voice has to be modified yeah. a little bit and we have to lift the room audio and stuff like yeah. that. So did you feel, and we will get to, um, I know you have some stories, but I, I just think oh, this I'm, is such a unique. I'm in whatever you want to talk about. All right. This is such a unique moment that, that doesn't happen for every comic. Or, and if it does, it's only a specific time where did you, you almost sort of feel like, or I had felt that when I was recording, I felt like I had better shows leading up to it than I actually had the night of, you know, and yeah. that I, I was proud of what I did, but I'd walked away and I said, like, I've, and I've had better shows since then, you know what of I course, mean? Of course, of course. New material and, and stuff. Yeah. Like, it's not... It's it's such a weird experience of like where you're like you want to do well, but you're yeah. not going for like the the that's like I feel like the third priority, you know? Yeah, um, I know what you mean. I think there was I can't remember where, but I remember sometimes being like, well, that uh, could have been the album just now. What whatever uh, prep show I was doing, but. Uh, I think what's healthy for us to remember is it's not the best show I've ever done. Uh, it's the best of results of this weekend of recordings. Um, I'm going to do better than this. Also, it would be bad if I didn't do better than this. Um, and, you know, my whole thing going into it, which caused anxiety but i think it was you know there's some healthy anxiety when doing this was i have to do every joke justice uh i've been i sometimes look at uh act as um i don't know if i've told you this before oh like uh a like when you're stranded on an island and you make a raft out of tw twigs and bark and all the stuff i picked the things that would float the least but uh <laughs> But you know what I mean? Like you you construct this thing that keeps you afloat. Like I consider bombing drowning. So it's like I'm trying to keep myself afloat. And uh, I think like, you know, 
these jokes did helped me not have bad nights for so long. It's like, now let's honor all, all the times I had good shows because of these jokes. Let's make sure these jokes are given the, the justice in that, if that makes any sense. Right. Well, you know, you've created these things. They're like, yeah. they're like your kids, you know, yeah. and, and you, and you also, there's sort of this feeling, I think of like this, for some of these jokes, I may never tell them again. Yeah. You know, so let's really send them out with a bang. And, mm. you know, we put so much people don't care. People want to, they hear it and they don't like that's it. But yeah. we put so much more emphasis into like this has to go like this. And if it doesn't mm -hmm. go like this, it's a failure, you know, and yeah, which the 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 thing that sucks, I feel like with like, like you were saying, like, you're just looking at the social media, that's all the reactions you can get, you know, views and, and counts and numbers and likes. The thing that sucks about that is that it does take away what we love, which is yes. like the, the personal aspect. They, nothing is better than seeing it live. Every special is 10 times better if you were there. You know? Right. That's why, and you're, you and I are very similar in this regard. So I know you'll agree with this. That's why I keep. That's why I post uh, clips of me making a mistake uh, or a glass falling. And then I do a riff about that or, you know, and you have some some of my favorite reels are when things happen to your show that weren't supposed to happen. And that's why there's some of those moments in my special, including like in the credits, like. Uh, I need people to know that I want people to leave with the feeling of, oh, I should go see him when he's nearby because you don't know what's going to happen. Exactly. Exactly. And that's yes. a very important thing to me. I, I've said this a lot, but like, uh, I don't believe anyone wants to see a comedian that's not really there. Uh, so if uh, something presents itself, I've seen you do it countless times. I do it all the time. A lot of our good friends do this. That that moment is is uh, something for us to play with and throw out there for the audience present. That's present, and then they were they're like, "Oh, I got to I would go see this person again." Right. You know. I mean, we um uh are in that boat of like where the, the ride is going up, hopefully, you know yes, what I mean? It is. But, yeah. But how many times have you heard? Like, we didn't know what to expect. We yeah. had no idea who you were. And it all sounds like a, like, like not a compliment, but yes. they go, we had no idea what to expect. We don't know who you are. We had a great time. Those yeah. are the people that they're going to come back. Yes. Those people that walk in and they go, we bought a $10 ticket. We had no idea. It's in a basement. You know, we don't know what the hell's going on, mm -hmm. but, uh, but we, you, you know, when you can turn that into a show, like yeah. that's really, that's a great feeling, you know, and that's what we really thrive on. Yes. I, um, I remember somebody told me recently, but it, it like Seinfeld, that's the only thing he misses is that no, he misses people not knowing who he is. Uh, and, uh, my favorite comics are comics that nobody you know, like regular people don't know when you drop their name and it's because they're still worried about people coming to see them. And, and uh, I'm not saying that the giant names don't w work really hard, but they may not have that motivation anymore. You know, like, uh, like the having that fear of, uh, or that drive of filling the room fear of people, nobody coming or drive to, to sell out a place that feeling really, I think comes through and, and that's what leads to what you're saying for me in my opinion. Yeah. Yeah. I, I a hundred percent agree. Um, let's talk about, let's get into this a little bit, you know, being present is so important. And when you're not on stage the audience, I think just knows immediately. And I've felt like, whether it's like you're angry or you're disinterested, when's the last time you've really felt because because you're you're not this way on stage and you're not this way really as a person, but I know you have times where you, you really experience real anger. When's the last time you've really been angry on stage or angry with a crowd? That's a great question. 
Um, you know, lately as my confidence, you and I are, we're, I'm just going to, I'm going to stop saying that you and I are similar and just say that that's going to come through everything I say. Um, I have a hard time believing in myself, uh, at times. And, uh, even though I think I'm funny, I, I still think this should, I should be doing better with writing. Like this should be better. This should be better, whatever. So lately, I don't know if it's something that comes with turning into your thirties, but my confidence is naturally, or if it's just from all the hard work and therapy is starting to get stronger. And I'm noticing that I wouldn't say I'm being arrogant maybe i am at times but mostly just believing in myself so when i tell stuff that i'm like truly i know what i like i've been doing this long enough to think i know the difference between what's really good and what's not that i'm telling when i bring something that i'm like this is good and then they're not giving it anything and it's just i think it's when the lately what's been making me angry and I have to hide that is when they're not meeting me at what I'm giving them. If that makes any sense, I'm trying to get better at pouring myself out to them and giving them everything, every ounce of energy I have movement, uh, worked hard on the jokes. Yeah. If I don't right. get anything back, I do get angry. I, uh, or, you know, I try to fight it but uh, mad it bo it does bother me right so, right so not showing them that is hard and i don't i'm, I'm trying to sh not show my friends that after because it's not an energy you want to bring anywhere so sure that's the thing that has made me angry lately is uh also you and i are in the same boat of well we're we're trying to write new and get rid of that last hour so the anger of going up there back to my uh, raft analogy and realizing I don't have enough to survive uh, without dipping into old stuff. That makes me angry too. And that's just putting too much pressure on myself, but does it when, you know, I, I think I have a, a problem or maybe not as much now, but I definitely had an issue where I would get, I would look at the audience and it the show wouldn't be going well or whatever it was. And, I would just get so upset, you know, I get so mm. mad and I would take that energy on stage and I would come out at like a 10 at them where mm. I really should have just started from like zero and worked my way up. If that really yeah. was, hey, do, you, do you ever get like that with a crowd where you just sort of like, I, I'm already in my head, I'm against you, you know, and you bring that on stage. Uh, if I watch a friend or someone I truly believe is funny, uh, and they're not getting what I think they deserve. That uh, makes me mad. And I do bring that up with me, but I don't believe I don't believe I show it because I still give them a chance with my stuff to not tank the set uh, as much. Like there's so many people I think are great. And if they're not getting anything, I get mad as a comedy fan. And then I try, I'll give them a couple attempts at some stuff, but you know, it's probably the same results. Mm -hmm. Um, and that, uh, yeah, I don't know if that answers the, the question. Yeah. Yeah. That, that, that makes sense. Um, I, I cannot stand just like the, I, I guess, rudeness at a comedy show, you know what I mean? Right. It's what is from an, from a comic looking at an audience and this is going to sound and I really don't care if you don't uh, people just turn it off, turn off the podcast. Who cares? This is mostly <laughs> for people. If you're not into comedy, you don't, you shouldn't be listening to this, right? But like, right. like what is your biggest pet peeve as a comic that you, of what you get from an audience or what an audience is doing? We're getting into dangerous. Now we're getting to dangerous territory on, and I might outpour, because I have a lot of pet peeves. Yeah. I know it's a me issue. I have a thing about, and I'm not, I am learning myself. I want to make it very clear. I am not perfect. There's a lot of times I go home and go, what was, what, what was I thinking at behaving this way? And 
all that. And uh, so I'm constantly hating myself for anyone that put that lens on there. But right. anyways, I think respect is very important. Is very important to me. Respect is very important. Uh, so on both ends, respecting the audience and respecting the comedian. Um, but I have a, uh, I had the a show. I'm not, I don't want to reveal who any of the people are. So I'm just going to say there's a comic that, in my opinion, he did ev everything wrong he could have done in, in the green room, behaving to the other people, uh, went way over on his time. And uh, that just feels like, oh, you're the only person here. This, sh this show is all about you. And, uh, he only, you know, he did all right. He, I wouldn't say he did any better than any of us. So he didn't have to treat anybody else. Like he was the King. And that anger that I was feeling, I brought that on stage and, uh, did really well. And I think that, uh, and I talked about this with, uh, our mutual friend, Jen, I was like, I got to tell you, I did so good. Or maybe it wasn't with Jen, but so anyways, they were like, well, you should find a way to make that your motivation. And yes, it was with Jen. Cause she said, maybe that's where your energy comes from is being like, uh, I respect comedy. I care a lot about comedy. I'm going to go up there and do my best for comedy paying respect to this thing I care so, so much about. Uh, so, uh, going of your time is, is a big pet peeve. Uh, obviously, you know, there's grace periods and there's mistakes. Like I didn't see the light or whatever, but blowing the light drives me nuts. Um, just making anyone feel invisible is a big pet peeve of mine. Right. So making, making the audience feel like they're not even there. This is just for you or the audience making the comic feel invisible, which is crazy th that you're looking at your phone or, uh, talking to your, uh, your seat partner or whatever. Like when some people talk during a show, like this is a acoustic guitarist, Right. Yes. That's, yes. You should have went to see music. Yeah. That's crazy. And there's right. a lot of things. And it's like, also, I had this a couple of times at the recording at, on one show where I was like, what is this? I even said to the audience, what album recordings have you guys been to? Because <laughs> uh, I had someone answer every rhetorical question during a set. And uh, tagging, uh, jokes or saying, you ever have it where they say what you basically said to you? Absolutely. Like that it was their idea. Right. Right. You're like, yeah. And, uh, that's why you shouldn't, uh, have dolphins for pets. And they're like, Oh man, I want you shouldn't have that at your place. Yeah, that's that's the <laughs> thank you. Yeah, thank you for that. I, I was gonna, I wasn't know where I was gonna go next, but yeah. thank you. Like how I, yeah. uh, like my imaginary punchline. I, gave. I mean, honestly, I it does seem like you could have used their help with that. <laughs> uh, that's why you don't want to have it. I would love to hear the setup to that joke, and that's yeah. why you don't want a dolphin as a pet. That's like uh, an old. Carson bit where they it, would tell it, it you is. the end and then be like, uh, yeah, dolphin. I, you know what the setup could be? It could be about the Miami Dolphins. Oh, wow. Yeah. Maybe there's a Miami Dolphin that has like a violent past or something like that. You don't want to look at that. We that. just wrote a joke. We just wrote a great joke. I hope the ESPYs call us. <laughs> <laughs> if you're listening, <laughs> give us a call because we have a joke about potential domestic abuse with the Vi Miami Dolphins. It's going <laughs> to kill. It's gonna kill. It's gonna kill. Yeah. Oh man. Um, I I um would be curious to know, uh, fresh off of this exciting moment 
Um, the last time we were here, you told me a story about a, a, a show like a Buffalo Wild Wings. Yeah. Um, and, and that sounded horrendous. What, you know, and I think that's all we really talked about. Cause, cause you know, you okay, get down yeah, the rabbit hole, you know, yeah. um, when, when are some other, some other good ones of just, of just total, like not set up for success or just anarchy at a show where you're like, why, why, what are we doing? What's going well, on here? I hope, uh, I don't think I told this one, but I think it was, it was a story. I, I can't believe I told, I didn't tell you. Okay. Um, this was around the time I had just started opening for Brian Regan and I had been in, in New York city, maybe a year or so. And I come back home to Syracuse and uh, found out that they they were starting a show in my my uh, neighborhood where I my parents live, and I was like, "Well, this sounds great." Uh, and some I knew the headliner, and he said, "You should come by, and I'll like throw you on." I'm like, "That would be wonderful." Uh, and then, you know, you're already like clicking ahead. Oh, this is where this is my hometown. I could probably come back and headline in this spot. This mm -hmm. is nice. This will be fun. Get there. Rooms packed. And um, I hear. Uh, oh, yep. Caitlin is uh, coming and the cat just knocked something over. Uh, anyways. Uh, does that always happen? Like that? It, it, you know, some of us have dogs uh, with ball bearings. <laughs> right. Some of us have cats that knock things. Everyone yeah. comes in. Um, mm. But, uh, okay, so I, I go to the show, and the there's uh, too many comics on the show. I think, like, seven or whatever. And then a headliner. And uh, headliner introduces me. I think I messaged the head, and the guy said, come by. I'll... I'll the host said, I'll come, come by and I'll put you on. Mm -hmm. So I come to the host and he's like, all right, so I'm going to have you first. I'm like, sounds great. And, uh, I was like, do you mind saying that I'm going to be opening for Brian at the Syracuse theater this date, giving him my intro that normally a host would ask for. And he goes, well, let, we'll, let's see if you're funny first. And I was like, what? And he goes, yeah, I'm not going to tell them anything about you until you're funny i'm like uh okay well all right so he goes on stage and oh two of the comics in the green room are people i went to high school with oh my god that have never done comedy before of course and uh one of them is doing a trump impression for his whole set mm -hmm. and he is in the green room in character never broke character once i mean what is wrong with <laughs> there there are people in comedy that when they we need to set up an open mic <laughs> and when they walk in men in white coats grab them yes and they go gotcha yeah we tricked you free yeah. open mic today at noon and anybody yeah. that shows up in that <laughs> is gonna like those big cartoonishly big nets yeah like 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 they're gonna just that they would catch bugs bunny with like that's yeah. what they need yeah. to throw over these people like they step on a twig on the stage and it comes up from underneath yes them. right yeah exactly they step on the bike cable and then they just pull it up <laughs> into a into a trap and then they get a bunch of ewoks come out <laughs> yeah right yeah oh my god all right so this guy's in full character he's method full he's method. character he's got the caked on orange makeup the the wig the whole thing and he's just like, this is great. And, and uh, <laughs> I, I can't do it. I'm just so mad thinking about this. I'm sorry. I'm getting in that men mental space I was Get that there. night. Oh, God. It was aggravating. Because I even tried to be like, hey, man, how's it going? And he's doing that. And I'm like, I, I can't. I can't believe this. And um, so then the host goes on stage. And next to him, should I be concerned about the, the clock, by the way? Uh, no, I'm pretty sure that it just continues because it's a one on one. I don't know okay. why it's like that. Okay. If it shuts off, we'll figure it out. All right. Great. Um, 
uh, I get the host is on stage and he starts doing some jokes. I don't remember any of them. I'm sure they were only okay. And uh, I wouldn't say this about anybody uh, on a podcast if they weren't everything mean to me. Mm-hmm. <laughs> but anyways, uh, he's on stage. He tells some jokes. They're, they're fine. And I looked and he's got a, his son next to him on a soundboard. And every punchline he points to his son and his son hits a button and it's like oh yeah or like <laughs> or boop, 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 and it's like <laughs> all these different i swear to god different sound for every punchline <laughs> and it was insane uh and it's a full room and i don't remember their reactions but i don't think he was kill- he was not killing and uh, I was just like, what the hell is this? And I'm finding out no one other than the headliner and me have done stand up before. Oh, my God. So then I go, he, I go up. He's like, hey, you're, uh, please welcome your next comic, Steven Rogers. And the son, you know, hits a whistle button. You <laughs> and uh, <laughs> and <laughs> Oh my so god. I go on stage and I do and I see some people I know. Uh it's in where I grew up and uh I'm doing fine. And it's like in my head I'm like what the hell is this? I'm like I do these jokes in theaters now and um <laughs> there's nothing decent reactions. Then I'm like doing better, I'm doing all right. I, for, by the way, I forgot to mention this. I go, when's the light to the host? And he's like, no, I don't, whatever. He goes, I guess, I don't know, 15, 20. And I'm like looking at the lineup and I'm like, if he does this for everybody, this show's six hours long. Right. And, uh, but I'm first and I'm like, and he's already like proved to me you're funny. And it's two guy in full character. The other guy's being like standoffish to me. And I'm like, all right, all right, that's fine. Oh, and two of my best friends in comedy at, at the time, RJ, RJ McCarthy and Justin Jackson, who are killer comics out of Syracuse, come to check out the venue with me. So they're there. And uh, I, he's doing the button. So he brings me on. I do fine. I, and I start to do well. And then I, I get off stage and he goes, Hey, you can see him opening for Brian Regan, uh, at, at, uh, the theater. And I think he does it wrong. I ca- think he calls him Reagan. And I'm like, and it's now it doesn't matter. I'm already off. Mm-hmm. Um, and, and, uh, I'm like, good guy. And Justin and RJ are dying laughing. Of course. And I'm like, All right, I'm going to go join the comics. Next comic on stage. Uh, is the one I went to high school with who's not uh, the Trump impressionist. He gets complete silence for 20 minutes. And he's trying hard. He's like doing act outs and blah, like he's on the ground, you know, he's humping the stool. And all the but hits. he's never been on stage once in his life or written a joke. And uh, a family comes over to me. I'm sitting with the two other two comics. Uh, a, a whole family comes over to me and goes, are you going back on stage? And I go, no, no, I, that was it. And they went, okay. <laughs> <laughs> and then they went, <laughs> they went back. And I'm like, oh, now everyone's realizing one of these people has done stand-up before and everyone else has not. Then the Trump impressionist goes on stage and does Alec Baldwin's impression and does Alec Baldwin's jokes, SNL jokes. And I'm like watching this going, I've read that tweet. I've seen this joke and he's doing great. And I'm like, of course. And at some point 
He's heck. Oh, then he sits in the audience as Trump. Headliner goes on. He's heckling the headliner as Trump. Oh, my God. This is completely out of hand. Then, after the show's over, a group of comics and I are talking. Headliner, two buddies of mine, and I don't know who else, and Trump. And he's talking to us as Trump, and my buddy gets in a fight with him, and he's the guy stays in character as as Trump. Not a physical fight, just an argument. And he stays in character as Trump the entire time. The, is this person still doing comedy? No. Thank God. And what this did- person wants, in a, I think, drunk rage or high rage or whatever messages me and goes... Uh, and I only hear him in, in Trump voice now, but he's like, you got this. You've been doing the same jokes for for. Uh, and he he says, like, uh, a year amount of years I've never lived even. <laughs> and uh, he, he's like attacking me for uh, my jokes, doing the same jokes. And uh, then he uh, stopped doing comedy. Oh, my. What did the like if I feel like if I was headlining, I would have been like. Every you're all fired. Like well, the headliner is uh, uh, <laughs> he is wasn't great of a he wasn't as he was a troubled guy. He was uh, like an addict, uh, and he was kind of sometimes numb on pills. It was truly the wow. worst show of my life. Uh, do you have do you have the number for this place? <laughs> do you have the email? If if uh, there's justice in the world, that place is burnt to the ground. Truly, yeah. Those are the kind of places that you go. Okay, so you'll just ruin comedy for everybody here. Yeah, you'll just you. Th- th- this will just be a night where all of these people go. We'll never come back to this oh, again. Yeah. Oh um, yeah. Wow. What do you do to get out of that head? I mean, talk about anger and carrying anger and 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 depression and sadness and anxiety. What how do you leave that and and let that go? What do you have? What's your what's your routine? Do you have a do you have anything you do or eat or drink or whatever? No, um, I'm lucky enough that I can be like, ah, that's funny. Mm-hmm. Sometimes things are so bad it's hilarious, right? And uh, I try to have that mindset. Oh, she's gonna eat my ear. Oh, she just jumped she through just my went ears. Through your, oh my god. <laughs> If you if you're not watching the video, this is a real uh, a testament to why you need to go watch the video because Steve's cat just walked through from one ear to the other. That was pretty amazing. Yeah. Wow. Uh, <laughs> My God, that's Siegfried and Roy. Yeah. Wow. Um. Uh. What if she came out that end covered in wax? <laughs> oh, good lord! That's funny. Um. But yeah, I think like this. The last episode I was on here, I remember Caitlin and I both told the story about we bombed so hard at a co-headlining thing. Yeah. But then we go to a bar after and we're laughing at how bad it was. Right. So I think if you can choose that path, I, and it, I'm not saying it doesn't require a lot of effort because there's a lot of times I just spiral neg- negatively after and hate myself. Uh, but if you can choose to be like, eh, that's... That's new. Mm-hmm. Things have never been that bad before. Mm-hmm. Um, and it's also, I don't know, there's, if it was all perfect, it wouldn't, you wouldn't enjoy the good stuff. So uh, it's getting to a place where the, the bad thing is funny is important to me because that helps. Yeah, absolutely. It's a good outlook to have of like, yeah. this isn't every show, you right. know, luckily. And it is yeah. for some people. <laughs> and it is yeah. for some people. There is yeah. no denying that. Um, there I are agree. people in this business that have that that go, I'm killing, and they've never they've never heard a real laugh in their entire life. You know, it's an, and I, you know, it's unfortunate, but I think having a the fear of being one of those people is what has made me work so hard. <laughs> oh, truly, absolutely. I mean, the the i the idea of going on to a show and i'm sure people make assumptions or judgments other comics about everybody it's just in the nature of the business but like yes 
my biggest fear is doing a show and every comic on the show going, why, why are they doing comedy? Why are yeah. they on this show? You know? Yeah. Um, I, uh, I always worry that, yeah. Cause you're wh while you're on stage, they could just be like a oh, heck of Palooza, right. you know? And, uh, which is my next album, but, uh, heck of Palooza. Okay, it's good. <laughs> that, that all adds up. That tracks. <laughs> um, <laughs> That's what people were saying was the uh, name of this current one. Um, right, and it's not. It's not that one. Okay, all right. I mean, um, but uh, that fear, that fear is motivating as well. Of yeah. uh, delusion. Yes, yes. The f to stay away from the delusion and not to be delusional yes. is so motivating. Yes. Uh, so you look at yeah, yeah. So recognizing that was a terrible gig is very important yes um, right. not not just when it's organized badly but when you do badly or you know it when you bomb uh right i think that is important to note right and i understand uh i envy the people that are very confident mm -hmm. but uh i i do prefer where i am on this that spectrum because uh i do think it makes me uh write a lot and speaking of spectrum we are actually going to have you take a test just to sort of get some numbers um i love numbers yeah <laughs> i know i know and you love to repeat them too um but we're just going to ask you a couple questions and your family had reached out it was at their oh, request they said sure. why you have them sitting down it's so hard to get them sit down for a little bit just you're telling me through. i'm on the spectrum <laughs> oh my god <laughs> Uh oh! Oh, geez, this this is taking a turn. Uh, oh, come on, that was fun. That was fun for it's the just, uh, audio for the, people. I pretend to eat people. my cat. He's pretending to eat his cat. It's <laughs> Steve. The thing I love about Steve is that he's so physical. As a <laughs> he relies so much on physicality, and I love that, and I love it, and I love yeah. you. Um, Steve, I, I love you. I, I do. I do just uh, love talking to you, and I I feel like we could. You know, we, we are all we're, we're, we're very similar, um, you know, philosophies and ideas about comedy. Uh, mm -hmm. And I'm so happy for your new album and your special. It's, it's doing well and it's Thank so you. well deserved, um, despite what I might think personally. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> and wait, uh, real quick, were you upset with me the other night at, at the show? I got to tell you, I did get upset. You could. I I thought it was so funny. I thought it was such a funny. Like, I thought you were. I here's until this moment. I thought you were. That's why upset. I got upset. Upset. I thought it was so because when when the host came out and said Steve has to go before you, I said send him out here. I said right. let tell him to come out here because so I when I was him. going up outside to see you, I had a feeling it was going to be a joke, but you then made it seem like you were actually upset, which I'm now realizing was a bit. It, right. Was it a bit? It, of course it was a bit. Because I, I had did said not, to you. I did I said, not think that. And Because we're friends. I said, yes. because you're my friend, I am going to delay my night for you. And right. I I was... And then I feel like after you got off stage, still, you were, up, you were upset. I was upset. I even did less time. I know. On because i thought i was holding up your night and right. your bit was so convincing that i thought you were being sincere and i don't want to delay anyone's i don't want anyone to miss anything because of me but i had to go right. and uh i had to drive the other comic to the same show mm -hmm. so i had this urgency towards two people at that moment you what it, what was happening was I was having anxiety about one person making it be, due to me, and then I hear from you, didn't know it was a joke, that you weren't going to make your spot because of me, and the whole reason I'm on the show is for something that is going on with me. Right. So I felt like a huge uh, ass, and yeah. uh, so I was like, well, I'm just going to do. I even went up to the host. I'm like, I'm getting off exactly at this time, because and. I was, that's all for you. I had no idea you were joking. Yeah. Well, I talked to a friend of ours about it and I said, I think he was upset. 
And he's like, there's no way. I said, I'm telling you, I think he was truly, I said, I, I will eventually ask him, but I think he was genuinely upset with yes, what was, I was going on. And were uh, you but, mad? No, I was not mad, but it, I was annoyed because I was, I was annoyed at the situation, not the person. Sure. Uh, but uh, yeah, it, uh, it bothered me. Well, I'm, I'm, I'm happy that we could resolve this. <laughs> Fifty-one minutes in, and we finally got to the reason I've had you on this. Yeah, I had a uh, feeling. <laughs> yeah, uh, and you know, I, I hate to do this, but I felt like had you not been upset, you, the like I, it would have killed so much harder with you, because you even came off and you said. I, I did five that, instead of ten. Right, you, you were adamant about telling me that, and I am. Do you know what I said to you? Do you remember? No, I said 10. What are you, Chappelle? That's and, right. And I just thought that was such I, I wish we could go back to that moment and I could say this is all a bit. And I wish I could. It's, you know, I, uh, it, it was a stressful day. Yeah. Uh, right. As you may recall. Uh, yes. Yeah. Uh, to go to the vet. Yes. And yeah. that was stressful. But um, so I think I was not in this, the mindset to recognize humor, to recognize your humor. Right. And uh, when do you think you are in the mindset to recognize humor? You know, it will take me some time. Give me some time. I'll, I'll rewatch. Uh, Hello, it's me. You know, right. And uh, see if there's anything in there that you could pull that you find funny. Again, it's really not meant for people. Uh, <laughs> As much as it's just meant to be played in the background of like a coffee shop. Of course. Um, um, but but no, seriously, I am so uh, happy for you and excited for your uh, your new special and your album, Steve Rogers, before he was super. Yes. And it's great. And I do love the ending. It was the the, the outtakes at the end were fantastic. Oh, thank um, you. Yes, of course. And tell people again where to find you and your podcast. Uh, my podcast is called Panic Attacking. It comes out every Monday. It's with uh, the very That's funny. That's all our time. Thank you so much. <laughs> <laughs> it's with the very funny Andrew Chavone. And uh, it's great for anyone with anxiety. And uh, my uh, special and album, Before He Was Super, you can find uh, the special on YouTube for free at uh, Stephen Rogers Comedy. And uh, the album itself is on itunes and amazon all, all the links are in my bio of my instagram which mm -hmm. you should follow <laughs> steven rogers comedy right yes we'll put it all in the um description i mean it's so much but i <laughs> and listen to the podcast because you heard it here he's saying it. if you have anxiety you listen to steve's podcast and you go well at least it's not that bad yeah so listen yeah. to it if exactly. you are somebody that feels like the world is not handing you any favors you listen to steve's podcast and you 100%. go i if this guy can get out of bed what do i have to complain about so you're doing a lot of people a lot of favors and that's what i love about you is that you're a giver Ugh. you're a giving comic um steven thank you for being on this and again i'm so happy for your for your album and your special to finally be out so thank you uh, thanks for having me and if you your listeners haven't they should check out hello it's me it's very funny we we've stopped recording 20 minutes ago. Oh, well, you know, yeah, I, I noticed that. That's why I plugged you. <laughs> we're not going to use any of this. <laughs> None of this is usable. Uh, thank you, Stephen. Thank you.